Hello, welcome to this week's How's the Market, Pensacola. Well, buyers are going home. Buyers are going home. I have heard more and more that buyers are just giving up because they get 10, 11, 12 offers and they just are not winning any of them. I had two buyers that hit up last week and we won the first offer on both of them. So I just kind of did that, but then they came to me later and they were like, you know, we've got friends that have been trying. 10, 11, 12 times. Of course, I'm in groups around the country that agents are getting frustrated. Buyers are getting frustrated. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that they're not getting things done, that you're not getting the contracts. And they're just, it's like over and over and over again. So the buyer's mentality is we're just going to go rent for a year and wait for this to cool off. The problem is when they say cool off, they're thinking the prices are going to come down. There's nothing pointing to that. Nothing pointing to that. Will I think that we might not go as much over? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Will they be less buyers? No. No, the only thing that's actually going to change this is going to be wind up more sellers. That sell side of the equation, getting more inventory is the only thing that's going to change this up some. So sellers right now are in control. If you've been watching this for a while, you know that I pointed back, I think it was last week, I actually pointed back two years ago, when certain price points, buyers were absolutely in control. Will I think that we get back to that again one day? Sure, sure, we'll get back to that again one day, but are we there or anywhere close to there right now? No, no. Now, as I'm shooting this, the Fed's meeting. The Fed is meeting and they are actually going to be making announcements tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, the 16th, about what they intend to do. A lot of anticipation now is inflation is starting to rise a lot faster than they thought it would. Okay, GDP's up. We were trying to keep the growth at about 2%. Last looks like last month, uh, year over year, the growth was 3.8. So that's when the Fed starts making changes. Now, does that mean they're going to change the rates right now? And how does that trickle down into the mortgages? No, they're not going to change the rates right now. The 10-year Treasury rate actually has come down some, and the Fed fund rate is probably going to stay the same at least the rest of this year. The talk has always been 2023 to where the Fed start using that as a raise rate as an inflationary measure. I think what they, they're going to do right now is they're going to continue to buy less and less T-bills, their own, and um, discount them less. So I think they're going to use that tactic first, and once that's run its course, then they'll actually start raising. But the question is, are they going to wait till 2023 to do that, or are we going to be looking at maybe fourth quarter third quarter of 2022 if inflation continues to rise the way it's rising uh, we're going to see that the other thing that i actually saw last week was looks like there's a bill out there that says the um, infrastructure is not going to be paid for by taxes instead they're going to index a gas tax well the gas tax has been the same since 1993 so if they index that to cost we could see prices go up pretty significantly quickly to pay for that tax. And of course, if there's a gas tax that goes up, fuel costs go up, shipping costs go up, everything else goes up. The dairy farmer is going to have to charge more because it costs them more to get it to the store. So do I think that we're going to see inflation? Yeah. Yeah, we are. We're going to see some stuff continue to rise. Hopefully not to the price like lumber has lately, but those raw materials and stuff, that's the type of stuff that the Fed's going to try and avoid to where we don't raise that crazy and it will impact real estate some, like the lumber stuff we have seen, it's impacting some of the builders lately. But I've seen some builders not willing to put a price on something just yet until they're about a third of the way or even half the way built, then put a price on it. Because then they know what their hard cost is going to be. They had some people, you know, middle of last year, put a contract in, it took them seven months to build and lumber went up 20%. Well, that hurt them, obviously. So that's why they stopped doing that. A lot of this stuff will kind of trickle down here. Do I think that buyers going away right now is a good idea? No, I don't. I think that sellers need to come to the market because you can get stuff right now. It is a fantastic time to sell right now. Uh, and I think that we're going, that appreciation that we've seen rapid for the last 30 months, 28 months, uh, is going to start to taper. I do not see depreciation anywhere. Let me be very, very clear. I do not see depreciation of real estate anywhere in the next five years. There's no, not in our area. There may be some in other, other areas of the country that I'm not familiar with, but in our area, I don't see any depreciation in real estate in the next five years. 
It may slow to a regular appreciation rate of you know one, two, three percent, not the twelve and fourteen percent we've been getting lately. Anyways, um, that was an economic lesson this morning. We, <laughs> let's just talk about number more numbers. Let's talk about more numbers, but let's talk about our two county and where our inventory levels are. Sell side will be the one that actually tapers this down some. The sell side. Let's go. All right, if you've never seen the show, you don't know that I always start with this slide right here. It says if we have between six and seven months worth of inventory, we have what's called a neutral market. Anything greater than seven is considered a buyer's market. Anything less than six is considered a seller's market. What the slide does not say. Anything greater than nine is considered a hyper buyer's market. Anything less than three is considered a hyper seller's market. Jump over to Escambia County. And just like last week, everything up to $550,000 is a hyper seller's market. If you look over here, if this is the first time you're watching the show, over here is our price points, over to the right is our estimated months of inventory. So all the way up to 550,000 is a hyper seller's market. 550,000 and above is just a seller's. So our luxury has actually dropped down a little bit. I wanna say that was 4.1 last week. So it's 3.8. These are over three months. You do have this 600 to 650 which was 2.3 last week, but now it's 2.7. So technically under our definition, it is a hyper seller's market. But for the most part, everything over $550,000 is just a seller's market, not a hyper seller's market, which I'm seeing the 500 to 550 grow in inventory. Last month, that was one point something. So we're growing in inventory there. Your 150 to 350. 100, basically 100,000 to 350. Still under a month's inventory. All right, there's properties out here. If you look at the 150 to 200,000 mark, there's a half month's inventory, but there's 45 active. Now we got 158 pending. So you can tell the appetite there. As soon as something comes on, especially if it's good price, we gotta be ready to go. There's some ways that I've been able to help these buyers. That's one of the reasons I'm able to get contracts because we know how to negotiate and we know how to do it quick. Usually, my brand new buyers, we're having a conversation before we're even thinking about talking about a particular house because I need to understand this marketplace first. So you do have some actives here. Uh, Scambia County has 413 active properties, which is growing a little, not nearly enough to impact it the way we really would like to uh, in the area. Let's jump over to Santa Rosa County and the zero to 50,000 mark. We're back under nothing. None, nada. Zip. 600 to 650,000 is jumped out of the hyper sellers and is just a sellers. Uh, 700,000 plus is just a sellers. And look at this, the 500 to 550 is creeping up to that mark. So we're picking up, we're definitely picking up some inventory in Santa Rosa County because I remember a couple of weeks back, this was under 200. Now we have 244 active. So we're making them move the proper direction. <clears throat> it's just, we have so much demand. There's so much demand there. Uh, and this is the time of year when people like to move because school starts here in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months. I, I, summer just started, right? And I'm saying school starts in a couple of weeks. Well, in, in real estate time, school starts soon because people after 4th of July typically is when things start to slow a little. And the rental market's fantastic, especially your short-term rentals all the way through Labor Day uh, weekend and beyond. But uh, the buying, a lot of people do that move because they want to be under contract in July so they can be in the house when the school starts in August. So we typically see that start to come down a little. So we have seen some updated activity, but not nearly enough, not nearly enough. I'm seeing some of the coming soons, which do not post on this, because this report is pulled from the public access. Coming soon is something that only us uh, licensed realtors can see inside the MLS. I'm seeing a little bit of update in the coming soon, but it seems like as soon as it hits the market, it's gone within a day or two. So. 
I, I want to talk to the buyers for just a second. They don't get so frustrated. Don't get so frustrated. Have realistic expectations. Understand the marketplace and understand what you got to offer. <clears throat> and you can get contracts. Like I said, I had two of them pick up just this past week. Uh, one of them, and it don't, here's another misconception out there that people are saying, well, they're not accepting FHA or VA loans or even conventional loans. People are only doing cash only. That's not true. That's not true. The two that I did, one was a conventional loan, one's a VA loan. 100% fine, I think. Got it done. Got it finished. So it is possible. You just need to know how to structure things. And that's where having a conversation before we look at a house would really, really come into play. I wanted to bring up our instant offer program one more time with sellers because I've had two people call me last week asking me about the instant offer program. They saw it on the show. They said, hey, listen, we inherited both of them. There's almost very similar stories. They said, hey, we inherited this property. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't live there. We haven't been in Pensacola in years. Uh, what can we do? <clears throat> and I walked through, hey, you could put this money into it. We could sell it. I could put it on the market. We could sell it as is. Or if you just want an instant offer, we can do an instant offer. I've got investor pools that'll just give you an instant offer. And they said, that's what we want. We don't want to put anything. We don't want to pay for anything. Uh, instant offers, the, the sellers don't pay for anything. Uh, all the closing costs are on the buyer side. And uh, it worked. So I wanted to bring that up as an option if you've got properties. I had a few phone calls uh, when we first opened it up from landlords. Landlords asking me, hey, can I do this because my tenant has not moved? It took um, Almost took advantage of the, uh, well, I almost said foreclosure uh, moratorium, but it was the eviction moratorium. And they wasn't working before, so they're still making the same amount of money. They were, you know, I'm thinking of one particular customer. He said that the person wasn't working before, they were drawing disability before. Disability checks never stopped, but they knew I couldn't evict them. So they didn't pay me. Can you just buy this house and deal with the headache? And so we walked through it and I actually said, uh, we could, but I don't think you're gonna like the numbers that I got or the investors that I'm talking to would have because they, everybody knows that headache's coming. I said, instead, let's put it on the market, see what happens. We just disclose that, hey, tenant's not moving. You're gonna have to wait until that's done. We did, uh, we did it as is, and they got a fantastic deal. So that instant offer is a good way to just kind of check things out, especially if you don't wanna deal with it. If you've got an as is, there's a lot of work, you don't wanna deal with any of that stuff, uh, this marketplace has got some good deals for all parties involved. So hit me up if you got any questions about that. All right, there's our numbers. We need more inventory. We need more inventory. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'm a man on a mission. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there. And Don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Don't you just want the truth?